Hey everybody, it's Bust with Battles with Bust number 426, and today we're doing battle with Samira Sejuani. And so another day, another set of battles in the heart of the Huntress balance patch, another Glacial Sari on deck for you to take in and enjoy. And so we have played quite a bit of Glacial Saurion since the, the balance patch's release. I think it's one of the most influential cards out of the balance patch, and it really fits in the space of cards that I like to play, uh, being just a big, meaty attacker that fits well in aggro and mid rangey style decks. But uh, I feel like the decks that we've presented up to this point have all been fairly different. We had the Ash LeBlanc deck, uh, which is you know more in the mid rangey OTK kind of space with the Ash kills. We had the Vayne Jarvan deck, which has a, a lot more uh, forge and weapon-based elements to it and developing scout attacks and making the most out of Cataclysm, uh, is to where Samira Sejuani is just like a real meaty, attacky, overwhelmed style deck to where we're just looking to crash through the opposing defenses with our stats. And so uh, in the past, this style of deck uh, was something that you would call like a Bone Club Darius style deck. You don't have to run the champions in it. You can just cut all of the champions and include three copies of Bone Club. But uh, I really like what Samira and Sejuani bring to the table as a team. Uh, having an early interactive unit in Samira, but also the flares tying in with what Sejuani wants uh, in terms of a flip. And then Sejuani just being extremely powerful in this format that's kind of defined by uh, big, stat-heavy, attacky-style boards. And so those big, stat-heavy, attacky-style boards are typically just handled with buried ice. But what if we have another way to kind of take them down? And that way to take them down is going to be with Sejuani, and if she's able to flip, just frostbiting the opposing team does a wonderful job of just stopping those big style of attacks. And so uh, to kind of break away from the champion piece and move into the units, it looks like a kind of odd collection of units, right? But uh, I assure you these all have uh, some, some hope and meaning in what they're trying to do. And so we have a bit of a subtypes matter theme here in the early game with the Omen Hawk, Pouty Poro, and Precious Pet. Uh, these are all very effective early game units that can then be tied into the Bonehide Tritail. And so the Bonehide Tritail is, uh, in my opinion, I guess before the Glacial Saurion hit, this was the most high-impact, strong uh, unit that we had out of the subtypes theme. Just having this hit the board as a 4-3 uh, a is a pretty reasonably decent deal. I mean, you get a better deal out of the War Chariot or whatever it is in Noxus, but as soon as this thing gets plus 2, plus 2, whether or not that's from one subtype and then a bonus from Omen Hawk or two subtypes on the board, once it's up to that 5-4 or 6-5, you have a really serious threat that your opponent's going to have to contend with. And so uh, I really like a lot of these combos and having this kind of early game subtypes matter kind of thing that just ties into this super hard-hitting collection of overwhelms from the four uh, cost space forward, going with the Bonehide Tritail into the Glacial Saurion, into the Sejuani, uh, and then you can continue the curve up to the Warden of the Tribes. And so very powerful stuff there, but what I think that this deck gets out of these early game plays that you don't get out of all of the other, uh, you know, some kind of subtypes decks is the addition of Bone Club. And so dropping a Bone Club onto a Pouty Poro turns it into that big overwhelming monster that we're looking for. Uh, and then it also ties in nicely with the Precious Pets having a bit of evasion and maybe still being able able to uh, attack through against a Bandal City-based opponent. And so uh, after that, over in the spells section, we have the full three copies of Pirouette. Fantastic card in this format to where we're seeing a lot of very go tall style units. Getting a kill on one unit and a stun onto an Orn or something is absolutely fantastic, but uh, it does also give us the ways to deal damage to our opponent on their turn to help us level up our Sejuani. And then we're, of course, playing these two copies of Buried in Ice, a card I don't feel really comfortable without uh, leaving. I don't feel comfortable uh, heading out, out of the house, out of the home, <laughs> without a couple of the copies of Buried in Ice these days. And so that's the deck. That's what we're doing battle with today. Let's go ahead, jump on in with the old cat deck, see what we can do. And so, yeah, I will say I, I initially had this put together as a NAR deck. NAR is another champion that's that's quite interesting in these themes as to where it carries the Yordle subtype. So it works for your, your cats and your uh, reptiles and your Warden of the Tribes. And then it also has the ability to flip into the big Overwhelm unit. You know, Darius NAR was one of the ways that this deck was really put forth in the past. But uh, I felt like with the addition of the, the cat unit, the... Uh, 
I'm never going to remember its name, the Bonehide Tritail <laughs> that we, we just didn't really need uh, that extra effort to, to push through. All right, reasonable enough start. High, high collection of units here in the early game turns. Not going to be one of these games to where we play the Poro on one and then the Bone Club on three. A little bit unfortunate, but <laughs> a strong start nonetheless. I'm curious to see what opponent does on turn one. Uh, this is the space to where we can bank up the mana on turn one and then start in with Samira on turn two. Uh, and I'm kind of leaning towards it. I mean, the Boisterous Host isn't a, a super powerful unit to be taking down, though. You tend to want to uh, leave these things on the board so the Hallowed bonus doesn't get to spread. So um, I think he was fine to leave. And now the Bone Club does turn up. And so... Uh, again, I don't want to remove this unit. I, I'm kind of thinking in this mindset that let's just get around to our turn four and bone club up the Pouty Poro. And with that in mind, I think I'm just going to start with a pass. Uh, I want to see what opponent does. If they put a 3-1 Fearsome on the board, then we can add in the Ruthless Raider. I am okay with blocking it. But I, I don't want to get too crazy and start loading the opponent up with... Uh, with a bunch of Hallowed's here in the early game. I'd like to, to limit that as much as possible. Very good. All right, so I do want to take down the 3-1. The question is, do we want to take down the Boisterous Host as well? And it, it's tough. Like, it, it's nice being in a spot next turn to where we can potentially just completely deny the opponent's board, but uh, I, I think we're going to be kind of stuck in on this Pouty Poro into Bone Club plan. Oh, well, that works out. And so I I, I, uh, I think that the Pouty Poro is just going to be kind of safe in this space to where it can regenerate through the damage next turn. All right, somebody somebody call up Rico Rex and ask him if we're doing this right. We got the Poros on board. We got the Bone Club down. <laughs> Rico Rex has to just be like rank one this season uh, without a doubt and then just winning all of the tournaments if he gets to play the Sarion overwhelms across all of the decks. <laughs> so much, so much power for him. Uh, this is interesting, right? I think this attack is still safe. Uh, the, the thing here is if opponent has a hate spike, it, it kind of sucks, but they already played a hate spike. And then their most common thing after that... Oh, so our unit just has tough. He's not going to die anyways. But the, the most problematic thing after that would be the inclusion of a... Oh, is he just going to die this way? Oh, that was not, not, that was not on my bingo board for the day. <laughs> the, the Honored Lord challenge. But uh, I, think, I think this is okay. But no, Rico Rex should be loving this big overwhelm heavy format. I think it's gonna be be right up his alley. What do we got? Opponent scrutinizing. They hit something. A dark water scourge. It's coming at us with all the all the angles. But I think we're okay here. I mean, this game feels like if we just sit around and grind it out a little bit more, uh, you know, we're gonna be fine. We're gonna drop a Revna next turn. She's going to. Uh, just load up all of the units in our deck with plus three, plus three. And then I feel like at that point, uh, just anything we put on the board is going to be so oppressive for the opponent that they're going to be gonna be struggling. We the Warden of the Tribes. That's who needed... <laughs> That's who needed all the stats. So get that Warden out here. He wasn't big enough. If only she could see me. A little awkward. What you got? A Quinn bird? Well, what I'm looking towards here, I think we want to just bone club the Revna. I mean, opponent's got Hallowed 2, so he can hook her in for 4. If he hits us for like 10 with his other units, I don't really care. I, I don't think that's a big deal. Um, but if we could get out of this turn with you know, two or three units on the board as the combat stand right now, we should be able to play a Precious Pet and a Samira and then have the Warden hit next round. Fuck. Uh, I think that would all be fine. Well, let's try with another unit. We can Elixir of Iron through this Valor attack. Valor's going to be a four. 
We can take the precious pet up to five. We're gonna get gonna get aced by Gwen here, but kinda kinda is what it is. What a joy. Vengeance. Who plays cards like Vengeance in 2023? <laughs> Who does that? Why are you the way that you are? There we go. There's a big old Tusk speaker coming in. I, I feel like the, the way that we're going to be taking this now is we'll probably just be playing Buried in Ice next turn. Uh, opponent lost their scout unit, so we shouldn't have to worry about Cataclysms here. And so I, I think we can look to, say, play Tusk speaker this round. We're going to add in Samira, and then next turn we'll just play Buried in Ice as soon as we get the opportunity. And then two turns from now we'll try and end the game with the Warden of the Tribes. A name for myself, just an impression. Don't have the mana to Bone Club and Flare Samira, but I think this is okay. We still have very strong attacks for the turn, and then we can still build up to this Buried in Ice next turn. If opponent doesn't open attack, Buried in Ice should just be a be a game breaker. Seems like he's thinking about a Cataclysm. I know it's hard. Gwen and to Samira. Okay. To fear. So the Gwen is going to flip. We lose our Samira. It's not that bad. The, just for the the question for next turn is opponent going to open attack on us? Like, we don't we don't have a ton of options in what we can do now, anyways. But uh, if they don't open, I think we're fine. So let's Bone Club up the Spider. That's a secondary unit that he's going to want to block. He's you know, probably not blocking here with Gwen, but I'll feel much safer on the round if we get this Honored Lord off of the board. And now this attack that he has shouldn't be enough to kill us. Right, we have blocks on the important units. I don't know what the Hallowed Dancers brings back here. I guess we could have paid a little bit more attention to that, but I don't think it's enough. Well, that's a pretty meaty bro coming at us. <laughs> that's, a, that's a pretty meaty bro coming right through. Well, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna just take the danger route here. I. It, it's just so hard for opponent to be able to hit with Gwen this turn. If he has the second Cataclysm, fine. I don't think this deck typically plays rallies. Like if he plays rallies, we're dead. It's like I feel like we need a little bit more on the board before we try to uh, go after this Gwen. Like, if we go into next turn and just play the, the Warden of the Tribes and the Tusk Speaker, and then opponent has some kind of answer to the Warden, then the game's just kind of done at that point. So, let's grow the Tusk Speaker, make sure it doesn't die to a random hate spike or something. We'll follow up with the Tritail. Oh, you don't even have a subtype, do you? You just <laughs> the the Tritail just has all these meaty stats because he's a uh, he's got those Revna bonuses. Opponent paused for a long time. That's pretty scary, but I think we just drop the warden and go. Look at that. Now that's what the game's all about, right? What is this, like 19 plus 14? I can't even do that. That's 29 plus 14. I can't do that much math. Jeez. <laughs> I can't do that much math. GG, though. So many stats. That's what life's all about. People out here trying to play karma and stuff. Ooh, look at my karma. This is going to be fun. No. It's all about putting all these stats on the board. <laughs> GG. That's tough, though. I, I was thinking... I, I had some interest in trying... Um, trying Gwen and, and Quinn, the Gwen Quinn deck, but it just has so much trouble now that uh, the opulent foyer doesn't put multiple tokens on the board. And so, you know, you used to be able to, you'd get your, uh, when the foyer would draw, or would put the thing on the board when you got the attack token, and then you'd make a scout attack, and that would give you the attack token back, and you would get 
more of the of the little hallowed fountains or whatever those things are called hallowed fountain that's a <laughs> that's a land for magic but uh I, I was kind of interested i i've tried out that the gwen scissors whatever that equipment is that was just released and i i haven't been particularly impressed with it but uh, the the problem with the gwen scissors is like you'd get it and you would play it and if you would be at like hallowed one and so your equipment just didn't do anything and then you would uh, just be kind of like falling behind from there and it really only did stuff if you were at like hallowed three and i was very interested in the the wolf dog that now forges when it gets equipped and so being able to you know equip up the dog early seemed pretty pretty potent to me but um at the end of the day you know the 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 fountain is where it's at and the, the nerfed fountain really kind of took away from that style of theme All right, but with this game, we had the opportunity to maybe make a, a Samira attack last turn. I think with the way our hand is set up and with all these pirouettes, we're good to just play a bit of a value game here in the sense that, you know, if opponent starts playing Trafarians, we have pirouettes to take them off the board. If he wants to attack with an Ash or something, the pirouettes do a bit of work there as well. It just felt like adding Samira to throw her down in front of one of these one health units wasn't super worth. So... We can get much more out of her now. We have this uh, somewhat realistic chance of getting her to flip in the upcoming turns. And so no that may be a, a, a thing to strive for as well. See how the opposing Frostbites look here, though. Very easy for him to, to hold on to a bunch of mana. What is, what is this nonsense? You have the you have the Samira on board and you're like, no, -uh, no, no, I'm going to I'm going to Frostbite your overwhelm unit <laughs> what what could be going on here what could opponent be trying to do huh <laughs> well we're going to attack with samira but it's just going to be into this one one omen hawk i think we'll be pretty safe from that point forward we'll see if they have any other plays to throw at us but uh looking to flare hook the omen hawk with the samira if he has a frostbite and she takes a point of damage, it's not that big of a deal. And then uh, we'll start to threaten her her flip abilities. No problem. But right, is this an attack you really want a frostbite? That doesn't that doesn't strike me as very good. And so if we get a card out of this, then fantastic. So the thing we will be looking towards here, though, uh, is we've already dealt the damage for this turn, so our Sejuani is not going to level up anymore here, but we are getting pretty close to, to getting her to flip. We can deal one to the opponent next turn with a Pirouette, so if their play for the turn is, say, like Ash, or if they want to play a Glacial Sarion, uh, we can look to, to stun the Sarion damage face, get Sejuani up to three, and then that starts to get us to being pretty close to, uh, to flipping her. To so we'll deal one to face, shut down this LeBlanc for the round, that seems like a win to me. And how do we want to handle this next turn? Didn't pick up a way to to, to flip the, the Samira, which is a bit unfortunate. Let's take this. I'm just like eyeballing this Battle Fury now. I, I know that opponent has... Uh, some kind of frostbite in hand, but at this stage, they should be kind of locked and loaded with them. Uh, I'm just curious how greedy we want to get with these attacks in the sense that... Um, like, we could play Sejuani next turn, but, like, if we say Sejuani and, and load up the LeBlanc, and then opponent has the frostbite, how much are we really losing out on at that point and would we rather just hook in the bird i don't think i'm too excited about not. hitting the bird it, is, it just feels like a turn that's just just too important to getting that like singular point of damage in so i think this is okay he's only got two mana at this point I mean, that's 
Whew, I, I was ultimately like, if it, so, his play here has to just be brittle steel, right? Stand and fight. So if he has elixir of iron, we don't get to deal the damage, but we do get to still kill the LeBlanc, which is kind of unfortunate. But if his play was going to be brittle steel, uh, then I, I don't want to be hooking LeBlanc with one of these touch speakers, right? We had the opportunity to hook LeBlanc and then also attack with the Sejuani, but this just feels so much safer and better. To call themselves didn't, e <laughs> didn't even draw a card, huh? <laughs> LOL. <laughs> All right, GG. The Interesting. That was going to be a strong turn. We were going to be able to... Uh, I, I wasn't looking to play Buried in Ice there. I was going to play the, uh, the the Samira Flare to, to flip the Sejuani and then uh, add... The, the cat to the board so the next turn if we come in for the big overwhelm attacks there's a, a pretty good chance that the opponent can set it up to where they frostbite like one or two units on the left but uh, like half their team's going to get frostbitten there all right next battle though Ooh. hang on to a samira see what else we can get howdy poro says what up i'm here I'm, re I'm ready to do my thing. We'll just hold on to you for a little bit, friend. We'll let, we'll let the, the mana collect a little bit. So as we always say with our with our Sejuani decks, you really want to be playing the things like Tusk Speaker on the opponent's turn uh, so that you get to deal that point of damage in. Uh, this is a tempting one. What's his angle here in attacking with the, the Omen Hawk? Is it just to level up Nico? Like, if he has to spend a combat trick here, I think it's worth. Okay. Now we can start in with the, the Samira place. Is that even what we want to do? I mean, the blacksmith is more on curve. Hmm. No need to make a name for myself. Just an impression. Let's see. Let's see if we can't get an opponent to just play a weaker unit here. Ooh, deck hunter. That's not, that's not what I had in mind. <laughs> that's not That's not it. That's supposed to be weaker. Him having the bonus is a real problem. Alright. I'll just build up a bit, I guess. It's the Tritale. You'll be coming down next round. You're, you're the one that we're really looking to have, uh, have out here to party with. Stands for an amulet looks good. As it stands, opponent can't can't do anything to it. Get the point of damage into the face to help level up Sejuani. Gonna be putting the Pouty Poro on board. You know, gotta <laughs> gotta get that guy down. Now let's see what we can do. We got some good hooks with Samira. Five four overwhelmer ready to go. That's not bad. That's not bad. So our Samira may fall here. This isn't the, the, the highest of quality Samira attacks, but I, I think it's okay. He's not doing a ton this game anyways. Nice. Wasn't bad. What's his Nico at? Just one? Interesting. So, I mean, if we want, we could look to come in and flip the Samira this round, right? We got, you know, kind of like four cards lined up here if we want to go for it. And I, I think I like it. I mean, her, her ability looks really strong for the next round. Um, I guess the question starts to become well if we don't elixir of iron we can still play ruthless raider in the amulet so I think that's okay is it, even, is it really just worth it though Their juice? I've got I don't know man our units are just so much bigger than what the opponent already has on board goes 
junk construct. Okay. So we'll just keep the Gnar from attacking so we can't pick up the Pokey Stick. If he wants to get through in combat now, he can do it. Like, if he attacks with all of his dudes, losing out on Samira and the Pouty Poro doesn't feel like a big win. Um, but, I don't know. Maybe we're just losing the Pouty Poro at the end of the day. Ooh, nothing. Beautiful. Right, we gotta we gotta start getting our friends in here. This is not, you know, an awesome attack, but he only he has the two four health units. Like, do we just leave Nar on the board? No problem. Right, if we make an attack like this, we have the two overwhelms that come through, and we can protect one with an elixir of iron. I think that's okay. need to draw some of our big stuff though right <laughs> we, we found the the bone hides but we haven't found any of our, our our cycle our card draw to fight through this we're gonna get blasted by Nico eventually well omen hawks a thing I guess shit <laughs> yep you drew your big card we didn't draw any of our big cards well at least we're not dead here and so, I don't know, maybe we can draw our own warden and make something happen. Oh, he's got Nico in the mix as well. Okay, GG. And so, yeah, we've we've touched on this note before. Like, I, I don't know what the answer is in terms of the format. You know, this is like, that space is exactly why we're playing Buried in Ice, right? If he goes for the warden, we play Buried in Ice, we just win the game. Uh, and, and kind of on the flip side, if we draw our Warden there, he plays his Warden, we play ours, we're able to kind of go toe-to-toe -to -toe in terms of stats. But the, the risk that you ultimately run into is if I'm playing three copies of Warden of the North and playing three copies of uh, Buried in Ice, and then, you know, it's turn three and we've drawn three copies of those, uh, then you're in a real bind in terms of actually being able to put cards on the board. And so it's a, it's a real tough spot in terms of... You know the the numbers of these that you want to be playing and the 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 thing that i state with it is would you rather be in a spot to where you draw zero compared to a spot to where you draw two right so in that game would we have rather drawn zero buried in ices or would we have rather drawn two buried in ices and you know optimally we would have drawn one but <laughs> you know in, in terms of drawing two uh, you know it's better than just outright losing the game it's just my, my thought with it in this current format is that Riot has done so much work to make Pirates not a deck that uh, you're, you're able to just kind of flow through with things like these. And uh, I'm not entirely certain what the answer is there, but... Um, you know, the, 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 this kind of idea to where you're saying, I want to play a deck with three Warden of the Tribes and three Buried in Ice doesn't feel as good when you're just getting mowed down by uh, <laughs> by misfortunes and the like and so i don't know maybe maybe annie jen are getting more and more likely to be uh, superstars of this format but we'll see so back to this game we're up against sea monsters and the idea with our opener here is the only one drop this deck plays is the 2-1, two -one, the 2-1 two that does some kind of tossing, and then their only two drop is going to be Sea Scarab, and so we should be able to um, get that uh, uh, fearsome attack in with the Precious Pets, since those units both have two health, and then if he wants to trade a Sea Scarab with our 3-1, that's fine. The, the thing that's just horrible for us there is if we play Samira, then he plays Sea Scarab, and we don't get the opportunity to attack. But in this spot, I went with the, the stat line onto the Innovative Blacksmith. There's not too much blocking going on in this game. And so uh, if the Blacksmith gets just a, a attack as a five power unit, that's really the best we can hope for here. Let's see how this round goes. We might get something nice in with the, the Samira all out. I have to see what they add to the board. Well, 
I'm just gonna come in. It, it should be pretty obvious that we're up to shenanigans, but uh, if he wants to block the, the Mega Tusk into Samira, I'll allow it. Want to prove yourself? Now's your chance. It has been allowed, my friend. It has been allowed. So probably not going to be flipping Samira, right? We're, we need four spells next turn, and even with a Pirouette Flare, uh, we don't have anything in our deck capable of doing that. But we're still strong enough, I think. The Isles will bloom again. Hmm. So I don't think we have to worry about a one-cost unit coming out of Maokai. Uh, so it sucks if he has the um, the, the one-cost toss unit to get the sapling on board and then come in and hook the Samira. I really don't want to play two spells this turn. <sighs> God damn it. It's, it's like we're just so close to flipping the Sejuani. I think we had to go for it. I mean, do we just let this happen? Lose it, just lose the Samira. Then next turn we get to play Sejuani. Sejuani hooks Maokai. I think we're just stuck. Like having the single flare should be enough. Yeah, that was brutal. It's not like that was. Not, not like it was something that you have to worry a ton about, but it happened. Stand and fight. So we'll go this way. I, I want to hook Maokai with the, the blacksmith, so if he wants to uh, protect the Maokai, his vengeance has to go on the worst unit. He has the vengeance, though, for our Sejuani. That's okay. Uh, we got the Maokai off the board. Those shenanigans should be close to done. Opponent's getting kind of close to deep. They're six away at this point. If they want to hit it, they should be able to. Let's see if we can't get a kill next turn. I mean, is this even... Well, if we want to get the dredgers off of the board, we kind of do have to go for it this way. We don't have a very, a, a very powerful Warden of the Tribes, though. All right, we're only at two keywords at this point. Of course, of course, the uh, the Omen Hawk turns up just to mock us at this point. <laughs> Thanks, Omen Hawk. Ruination, Jesus. All right. So much for that. All right, Omen Hawk, you gotta you gotta carry the load now. You gotta do the work. Didn't hit any sick draws like a Revna or a Sarion here, and so you're the you're the key. <laughs> you're the you're the one that we need to do the work here today. Alright, not getting our equipment that easy, bro. You gotta have the jettison, too. Just have it all, all the time. Okay. Alrighty. On to the next one. This is interesting. The I, I wasn't expecting to be wanting uh, as much card draw as I've been wanting with this deck. I don't know if it's just because we haven't actually drawn a Glacial Saurion in any of these games, or, or what the deal is there, but it, it feels like I've just been wanting more cards in hand along the way. Interesting. All right. So do you do you hold on to buried in ice? I don't. I don't think you can. Opponents playing the the Nico Nar deck we played two games ago, uh, and and again having that that buried in ice to counter the warden is a big deal. But you know that's a it's a it's a pretty long ways away before the spell's relevant. Oh. 
So how do we want to go about this? We have the Samira, but she's not going to be super relevant on this board. We're going to be in the spot to where we want to play the Weapon Master on three, and then the Tritail on four. And if we're going to do that, we just want to go ahead and play the Pouty Poro now, right? Uh, if we want to give the Tritail the plus two, plus two, Samira is just not a, an important part of that equation. we pick up here. I like going for the fearsome one in this spot, I think. He hasn't played any Omen Hawks, so he shouldn't have uh, too many units capable of a block. To where if we go for the Overwhelm and he blocks with, you know, random dude, he's like, her Dura played a 2-2. Two -two. <laughs> yeah, that, that doesn't that doesn't feel as, as winny for us. And so, I think that's fine. And the Bone Club. Oh, we're gonna start popping. We're gonna start popping, fam. <laughs> Club. Say what up, my dude's ready to party. Close to a flip? I don't think so. Just can't attack. That sucks. Sucks for you, bro. So that looks pretty good, right? And so if he wants to add a unit to the board, he has to overwrite something. And then uh, his only block for our Fearsome is Gnar. So all of our attacks here look pretty good. He's probably got to give up his Sari on this round. Take him to four. So we shouldn't be in the in the land of getting lethal this turn. We, we should be pretty safe, I think. Have to worry about opposing Buried and Ices starting next turn, but for this one I think we're good. So how scary is this Gnar attack? Like, what, what does Gnar ever hit us with? Does he get... Uh, I guess you could have, like, Fury of the North-style cards. I don't know. I, I just don't want to be losing our Poro at this point. But Fury of the North isn't going to kill through a tough. So let's just get the blocks down everywhere. I mean, I'm a little worried about the Pouty Poro here. This just feels like this feels like one of these attacks to where you're like, I don't know what to do, but I have all of these units on the board, so I just have to put them all out there and hope for the best. Like, it, it doesn't strike me as a very well-crafted attack. It just strikes me as being spewy. So I, I think we were going to be safe at the end of the day. Now we'll get our second Overwhelm on board in Sejuani. That should hopefully be enough to, to finish off this game. It's going to be turn 7 here. Is this a... I'm trying to envision if we can just kill with Samira, right? I think we should add this stuff to the board. We just need to bank one mana for next turn uh, so that we can Buried in Ice after he plays a Warden, and I think that we're safe. He doesn't have the mana for Buried in Ice this turn. Let's do this. Let's start with the Blacksmith, see what turns up. Take the Overwhelm for certain. We're going to play Samira afterwards. We have the two options with Samira. I think the, the kind of easy one here is just giving her challenger and then hooking the tritail and then she should get another con uh, another card in hand after that this also has this with uh, I, guess, I guess this is the right samira we have the the bigger one in hand but uh we have access to the all out as well Tritail's the highest health unit here. I think we're good now. Can't block that fearsome, bruh. Fearsome blacksmith says, what up? <laughs> says, what up? I'm here to party.
got one less damage that way, but I fear that it's not enough, my friend. It's like, even if he has a, a brittle steel for our, our blacksmith, which I imagine doesn't I exist, uh, we should be getting fear. one overwhelm uh, from somewhere. We were getting the one from the blacksmith through, and then we could look to uh, uh, get two damage from the all-out, and then the fourth damage from the Samira Flare that will be coming into hand. Alright, GG though. Let's get one last game in. We're a little bit short of the hour mark today. We won't get all the way there, but I have some stuff I need to do, and so... <laughs> yeah, you have your choice. You either get a video that's shorter, or you get nothing. And so, I, I prefer to go for shorter as opposed to nothing. Hope you can appreciate that. What do we got? Timo Targon? This should be some kind of... Uh, some some kind of elusives number. Right, well, we got an aggressive start. Well, I, I I think we should probably kind of like re reposition that. We have a start that has a lot of cheap plays in it, but the Omen Hawks aren't particularly as aggressive as we would like them to be. But they can do some interesting things here. The, this is a, a, a play that we really kind of found out and figured out playing an expedition. Is to where if you have all of these smaller plays, like this is the way to just deal more damage. But when it comes to these Omen Hawks, a lot of times it was better to just not play the Omen Hawk on the first turn of the game. And then wait until the second turn to play two Omen Hawks. Because you would prefer the units in your deck to have plus two, plus two, plus two. Or the plus two, plus two across three units as opposed to having... One with plus one, plus one, two with plus two, plus two, and then one with another plus one, plus one. And so there were a lot of spots to where you would just wait on that first turn and then drop both of the Omen Hawks on the second. Um, and that's what we're kind of looking at here. But now that this game is, you know, played out a little bit more, we are taking the higher damage route with the Precious Pet, and we are going to want to deal damage to the opponent on their turn to help level up our Sejuani. So probably get these Omen Hawks down next round. That's going to be very important to uh, have the potential for the big frostbite on his elusives and so the the thing to note here this is Timo is kind of annoying right Timo's putting these puff caps in the deck they're gonna hit us for two or three points of incidental damage across the game but uh, we're, we're more interested in stopping his uh, stopping his big uh, elusive whatever it's gonna be he'll play like the two four and then put an equipment on it or something or He'll play the, the give your hand plus two, plus two, plus three, plus three, and then have a big elusive that way. Those are the ones that we're a little bit more worried about. So we'll, uh, we'll we'll see if we can't, you know, save our actions for when that kind of scary unit's on board. If we're going to have a three sisters or a pirouette to stop something. It's not a match to where it's ultra important to just get this Teemo off of the board. But we'll send in everybody. We should almost certainly get damage in this turn. I'm curious if he trades the Shade Stalker for the Tusk Speaker, given that you usually don't put stats on your units once they're already on board, but we should be getting the kind of guaranteed damage from Precious Pet. Now, I don't think we're dead next turn, but if we pick up something like a Samira, this now leaves us in a spot to where we can potentially uh, have Sejuani on board two turns from now and then Frostbite the team. Uh, I think it's probably going to be a little bit too slow since we can't actually get her down until turn six, but, you know, you gotta, you gotta play towards something. I'll scout ahead. Forgive me. Alright. Elusive's coming in. I heard the worst song in the way. Feeling not good, not good. <laughs> We're just at kind of like the the odd action in this game, and it's a little a little slow. Got a got an interactive. Ooh, we got a buried in ice. So we can definitely do something next turn if. He doesn't open kill us, right? And we do get to threaten lethal here now with the Sarion hitting the board. So maybe something gets to happen here. Attacking with everybody. It's 
a 14 coming through. He's got to do just a little bit of blocking. And so he shouldn't be going into the next yeah, turn with just this. 10 damage outright on board. And uh, still a, a very good chance that, you know, he open attacks us down to two and kills us with Mystic Shot or attacks us down to five and kills us with Blowback Mystic Shot. But if we get to roll into this next turn and he has to play a card before he gets to attack, then we're in a, a really prime spot at that point. Right, see, he's making his value blocks on the non overwhelm units, and he's still dead at this point. So, he's going to have to give up at least two more points of health on our overwhelms to try and Must slow this down. Fight. Or, right, you got to move some of these units further out to the right. The surprise? Uh, and so, it at least helps. So, he would have seven damage coming at us with how these units stand. And then he's still at risk of dying to a combat trick right now. So we know, we know we don't have to combat trick, but he doesn't know that at this point. Also just dies to pirouette, which is which is a much more dangerous point, I think. Mother Moon, veil me. All right, does he open? Squeeze them cheeks, boys. Let's see how it goes. We drew our buried in ice. Short of lethal on board, but again, you know, that's a very close spot for a mystic shot to just kill us. Play dude. Play dude. Play dude. Play dude. Play Mahari or something, right? Play dude. Come on. Aww. <laughs> I saw I saw the spell come forward and I was like, fuck yeah, he did it. He's doing something dumb. And then it was just the it was just the combat trick. Uh, it's gonna be a problem. He put it on the wrong unit as well, but it is what it is. <laughs> we had a shot. We had a shot. Alright, GG. <laughs> Uh, oh man brutal so many so many close ways to get a victory there nonetheless gg well fought well battled we can pull this deck up talk about it a little bit more and so I, i'm kind of you know up in the air with how i feel about a lot of this like i i know at least looking at some of the cards i don't want ruthless raider anymore it needs to go uh, but the the kind of like big thing and the big question I have about a deck like this is, do we really want to play Samira Sejuani, right? Back in the days of the kind of Bone Club Darius deck or the Darius Nar deck, uh, a lot of times they did do stuff like play three Nars and two Darius and three Bone Club. But it did really get to a point with that deck to where it played three Bone Clubs, two copies of Darius or one copy of Darius and then no other champions. And so... You have to kind of come out and make the decision with a deck like this and knowing that, okay, my Samira is never going to produce a rally, right? This isn't a deck that's going to be rallying with Samira. And so she's providing a little bit of early game interactivity, and then she's providing flares that you can use to, to activate your Sejuanis. And so uh, we had you know, decent success without with Samira throughout the courses of the games, but it was never any of these games to where... Uh, she was threatening dominance, right? And so uh, that's kind of a, a pain point. And then the next question is, you know, how do we feel about this Sejuani? As we are, you know, we played against the, the Nico deck twice, the Warden of the Tribes deck twice. We're ultimately worried about adding too many copies of Buried in the Ice and too many copies of Warden of the Tribes into our deck. It's very, very nice in those spots to have access to a champion like Sejuani since she can come down a little bit earlier, she can be a bit interactive, and then if she does flip and if you do have access to that that Frostbite ability, then on that final turn when your opponent plays the Warden of the Tribes, you know, if you get to Frostbite the whole team, you don't just immediately lose the game. And so it is a bit of a mountain to climb at that point when your opponent puts 60 stats on the board, but you know, the game's not just immediately done and you have the option there with Sejuani. And so uh, I'm not entirely certain what the answer is there. Uh, I'm really starting to kind of lean towards just, just getting rid of these champions and upping the things like Pouty Poro and, and then maybe including something like a, uh, a Darken Halberd or, or something to where you can potentially give Pouty Poro a bit of stats if you want in the early game and then you don't necessarily feel as bad uh, about playing uh, just that kind of cheaper unit. But, I mean, the with the, the way that this deck is kind of set up, with the Pouty Poro uh, having access to both Omenhawk and Revna and Glacial Sarion, it's not entirely unreasonable to think that it's not just going to be a 3-3 on its own sometimes. And so uh, that's where I, I'm kind of like leaning with this deck is... Uh, I think I just want to cut out the champions. And I want to up the bone clubs and I want to up the pouty poros, probably cut out uh, like the ruthless raiders. 
And then it feels like it's getting into kind of a nice spot there. And then the other point that I was kind of mentioning was I, I feel like I, I wanted just like a little bit more card draw. Like I felt like we ran into too many spots to where we just didn't have enough to do. And I'm not certain what the answer there is. If it's just to include uh, another copy of Revna so that we have another card draw unit, or if it's uh, something a little bit cheaper that produces a little bit more value though. Like, I, I don't know. I don't, I, I can't think of any like manifest cards that live in, uh, in these factions, but you know, like a, a cheap conchologist style card that's not super high impact, but just gives you a way to spend your mana turn after turn after turn. And maybe that's what we get out of uh, playing something like Dark and Halberd, you know, just a, a cheap mana sink early that turns into a big unit late uh, or, or something along those lines. But nonetheless, I feel like this is a pretty good start for this deck. There's certainly a lot of power here. Those turns, it felt like when we just had a, a Pouty Pour with a Bone Club spelt uh, exceptionally strong. Uh, a lot of decks in this format right now aren't particularly good at interacting with anything, and so having that that big mountain of stats that had tough and regenerate and overwhelm was was quite interesting and strong, especially when it gives us kind of a uh, under underserved subtype, if you will, as well. So very interesting, good stuff. I had fun with that. I hope you did too, because that is going to do it for us today. And so I hope everyone enjoyed the video. Hope you maybe learned a thing or two along the way, and you had a good time watching. So this is Bustin' Me. Thank you for being here.